Mississippi Weather Lab. Here's Eric's forecast. It was a nice start to our day with a good bit of sunshine, but as we pushed into the afternoon, clouds began to bubble up and then even a few showers and thunderstorms began to make their way in across the area. So let's take a look at the satellite and radar and see where those showers are ongoing. You can see they were moving from the northeast down to the southwest, so making their way across the basin and are now pushing basically straight through central Acadiana and are now making their way down to the south and southeast. But these are quick moving systems pushing off to the southwest at about 20 to 25 miles per hour, so they're only lasting about 10 15 minutes before they move out of your community, just giving you a quick dousing of rain here during the last several hours. And you can see those showers quickly moving from northeast to southwest across the area. Most of Lafayette Parish now pretty much done with the showers. Still have a pretty heavy one getting ready to move towards the Delcom area. Abbeville could see a passing shower here shortly. Crowley, you're seeing some of the rain right now, but that's moving out of your area. Jennings, you're about to get some of those showers, but as you can see, they're fast moving and won't all last that too much. Much longer and I would say by seven, eight o'clock, most of this is coming to an end. These showers were part of a big upper level low that's in the southern Gulf of Mexico, just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula, but still sending some of that moisture our way. Now the National Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on this. It does have about a 30% chance of development as it moves off to the due west, but I think it's going to run out of time and move over the east coast of Mexico. Not expected to really become anything and should be no concern for us. But the big story continues to be Hurricane Dorian, which strengthened during the early morning hours up to a powerful category five hurricane. Uh, winds now up to 185 miles per hour. Pressure has dropped down to 910, so just an absolutely beast of a storm. Made landfall just before noon central time and has been pretty much over top the Boko Islands for the last several hours now with those horrendous winds and will head towards the Grand Bahama area by later on tonight and into tomorrow. But you can see a real slow moving system with that eye pretty much well defined. 14 miles wide is how big the eye of the storm is with hurricane force winds now probably 45 miles outside of the center. So that's about a 90 mile radius around that eye where the big winds are occurring with tropical storm force winds up to around 150 miles across with this system. So as mentioned, 150, 185 miles per hour gust to 220 it has slowed down now only tracking off to the west at five miles per hour. And we do expect that to slowly continue to be the trend A very slow westerly track over the next 24 to 36 hours. This is now tomorrow afternoon. Still pretty much over top the Bahamas. Eventually, though, tomorrow evening making that turn and gradually begin the weekend down to a Category 4 storm. Right now, all the models continue to keep it turning away from the Florida coast, but you do see cone of uncertainty does kind of try to push it a little bit there. So we're not completely ruling out a Florida landfall, but all the models continue to be in agreement that it stays off the East Coast about 40 miles. Still going to pack some punch along the East Coast. Should gradually begin the weekend as it rides up through Florida into the Georgia Carolina coast down to about a hurricane cat two come Thursday and then finally begin to push out by Friday and into next week, but still going to be a, a long week ahead for many of those along the East Coast. So let's take a look at the European wind model and see just how tight this storm is. And you can see that's where that wind field is. Some tropical storm force winds getting close to Florida by tomorrow afternoon, but most of the heaviest winds staying just offshore of this system. Still, we'll see some tropical storm force winds along the Florida coast all the way up towards the Jacksonville area. But at least according to the European model, the worst of the winds stay offshore. Now, as we get closer to the Carolinas, that's where they could start to see at least maybe some 50, 70 mile an hour wind gusts, especially as you get towards the Nat Hatter area. That's where we'll have to be watching, and then eventually it moves offshore. But due to that heavy wraparound wind and very close to shore, it looks like storm surge will be a big issue as we're talking some portions of four to three to five feet getting closer to Jacksonville. Now we're getting up to eight to 12 feet of storm surge with this system as we head towards Tuesday and Wednesday closer to Savannah. Now we're talking 8 to 13 feet above ground in many of those inland locations. So storm surge is going to be the main story with this system as it rides up the east coast. Even as we get closer to Charleston, anywhere from 5 to 10 feet above, mainly right along the coastal areas, but still going to cause some storm surge wishes. But by eventually Myrtle Beach, the storm surge doesn't look to be too bad. So we already have hurricane warnings for the Bahamas and portions of Florida with tropical storm watches and warnings issued for a good portion of central Florida through most of the coming days. So locally though, 
D showers dying out tonight. We'll start off with dry conditions tomorrow morning and then like today, scattered showers will be working from east to west across the area, but we'll only go 30 40% chance for those passing showers on our Monday. So showers dying out 74 for that overnight low, but they should be coming to an end here over the next couple hours. And then tomorrow we start off mix of sun and clouds, temperatures into the low 90s with those isolated showers in the afternoon. But then by the midweek, rain chances look to be going down with plenty of sunshine. Temperatures will be on the rise. It looks like mid 90s a good bet for a good most of the upcoming work week and then by next weekend rain chances start to make their way back in, but even only at the low end threat of just 20 30% chances at that.